Is Copernicus one of the most influential people in Polish history? And if not Poland, the world? Let me know in the comments down below and let's learn a little bit more about him. It's the latter half of the 16th century and the riverside trading port of Torun has recently become one of the wealthiest cities in royal Prussia. I love that it's still got a wall around the city. How awesome is that? This state is now a part of the Kingdom of Poland. After a prolonged period of conflict with its previous tenants, the Order of Teutonic Knights. All the while, Torun's association with the Hanseatic Economic Union has provided it with some of the city's most iconic buildings. And it's in this magical setting that one of the world's most famous scientific figures would be born. Someone whose pursuits would be as revolutionary as they were astronomic. His name was Mikołaj Kopernik, better known to the English-speaking world Copernicus. As Nikolaus Copernicus. Yeah. Nikolaus Copernicus was born in Torun on the 19th of February 1473. The exact address of his birthing is disputed, however one of his childhood homes was certainly located at Mikolaia Copernica 15 in the city's Old Town area. Here's a question for any Poles that are watching. Um, over in the UK, we quite often, if there's a famous person and there's a childhood home, there's quite often a little blue plaque that is put on that house. Could be anyone's house now, but quite often there's a blue plaque. Is something like that done in Poland? I know this has obviously got his part of his name on it in general, but do you have anything to represent a famous person's childhood home? Question for you, there you go and is today the Nikolaus Copernicus Museum. Both of his parents were from wealthy merchant families, with his father, Nikolaus the Elder, originally hailing from Krakow. Not a great deal is known about Nikolaus's early years. There is speculation about his interests, which may have included gingerbread and searching for clams in the waters of the Vistula. What is known, however, is that Nikolaus's father would pass away in 1483, and from then on, young Nikolaus would be fostered by his maternal uncle, Lukas Watzenroder the Younger, who held a prominent position in the church. Historians believe that Nikolaus was then educated at the school associated with St. John's Cathedral in Torun, of which Lukas Watzenroder was once the schoolmaster. He would have then continued his secondary schooling in Wotswawek, which is about 50 kilometers upstream from Torun. When he came of age, Nikolaus Copernicus was off to the big city, that is, Kraków, the Polish capital in the 15th century. In 1491, he enrolled for studies at the University of Kraków, now known as the Jagiellonian University. Many have disputed how his time was spent. For example, did he have a part-time job? I, 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 look, I do like this, this video because it's just having a little bit of fun with things. I don't think Copernicus worked in a coffee shop, just, just as a, you know, a thought I have here. Or a lover. What is known is that he initially pursued the arts and mathematics. That would all change, however, when he became a student of Wojciech Brudzewski, a lecturer in astronomy and Aristotelian philosophy, the fields of which would make Nikolaus Copernicus see stars. Is it actually that far-fetched to link, you know, art and maths with astronomy? You've got to have the imagination to look outside the box for starters in astronomy. And I don't have that. I can say that for nothing. Um, and art can possibly do that, give you that imagination. Maths is, is, is important for astronomy as well, get them the figures down. So actually, those two courses that he originally may have taken... Um, links fairly well, I think, to the astronomy he ended up doing. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the Kingdom of Poland, Lukas Watzenroder, the younger, had moved up in the ranks in the church. In 1492, he became the Prince Bishop of the region of Warmia, located in Poland's northeast. When Nicolaus arrived at his new home in 1495 without a degree, his uncle probably saw it necessary to set his nephew on the straight and narrow. In other words, a career in the church. Thus, Nikolaus was sent off Erasmus-style to Bologna University in Italy, 
where he was to study canon law. However, once Nikolaus arrived, there were many more astronomical wonders to pursue. Amongst the many people he met during this period, he became acquainted with Domenico Maria Novara, a famed Italian astronomer, who not only taught Copernicus, but also took him on as an assistant. He travelled around Italy and also began lecturing in astronomy in Rome. Sometime around 1500, he travelled back to Varmia, and Uncle Lucas was ready to put him on the church's payroll. But Copernicus was able to convince his uncle that he needed more studies. This time, he enrolled in the University of Padua, which is also in Italy, and began to study medicine. One of his key extracurricular activities at the time was the study of ancient Greek, which he would use to read texts from astronomical works of antiquity. It is believed that, around this time, he finalised the basis of his theory that would revolutionise our understanding of the universe. He, he's clearly just one of these people that is like a sponge. He just wants to soak up every little bit of knowledge he can take. Um, and in today's world, you'd probably just call them, you know, a layabout, a, a filthy student, <laughs> you know, get a job. Um, but the, the, we need these people because these people are the future of things like medicine, astronomy in this case. Um, these are the people that create what is going to improve the world, if that makes sense. So we do need people like this, and he seems to be that character that will just soak it all in. In the early 16th century, it was generally accepted that the Earth was the centre of the universe, mm. and the other celestial bodies, in particular the Sun, also revolved around it. This geocentric model had been put forward by Ptolemy, a great mind of the ancient world, in his work The Almagest, also known as the greatest compilation. But like several other astronomers that preceded Ptolemy, Copernicus was not convinced. And using his mathematical learnings, he started to challenge these ideas. From this, Copernicus would develop the heliocentric model that placed the Sun at the centre of the universe, or what we would call the solar system, with the Earth and other celestial bodies revolving around. In 1503, at the age of 30, Nicolaus Copernicus returned to Varmia and began his long-awaited career in the church. For nine years, he acted as his uncle's secretary oh. and personal physician, until Lucas Watzenrode the Younger died in 1512. That was at his that escape. point, Copernicus relocated to the town of Fromborg, where he purchased a house and the northwestern tower of the town's defensive wall in order to observe the stars and further develop his heliocentric model. Isn't it amazing how even back then, without all the technologies that we have today, what they were able to discover? It's incredible. It, you know, we, we've got all the technology now, haven't we? It's, it's amazing what we've got. But it, I always find it funny how people... Well, the whole belief of the whole um, the earth is flat nonsense. Um, they knew even back then that the earth was not flat. They knew. But with the technologies they had compared to what we have now, it is incredible that so much was mapped out. And that's what's amazing about science, though. Science is always constantly trying to, to prove the truth, the fact. And you constantly get over time, you get... Um, people's uh, people's discoveries. Now that doesn't mean a discovery, um, for example, is the truth. It's 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 you're constantly trying to to find the truth. But it does just amaze me what they had back then and what they were able to achieve. Over the next 29 years, Copernicus conducted research to refine his calculations, with the occasional war or diplomatic matter to distract things. By the end of the year 1542, the health of Nicolaus Copernicus was deteriorating steadily. His life's work, however, had finally been completed. It was titled De Revolutionibus Orbium Celestium, On the Revolutions of the Heavenly Spheres. Within this work, Copernicus had correctly placed the order of the planets from the Sun. Wow. And his calculations on their respective orbits How? were surprisingly accurate based on what we know today. 
He also correctly identified that the Moon was the only celestial sphere that revolved around the Earth. And unlike Ptolemy's surmisings, the universe had no fixed point in which all things revolved. Sending his work to the printer early the next year, Nicolaus Copernicus passed away on the 24th of May, 1543. He was 70 years old. The controversy surrounding Copernicus's work was not immediate. It took many years for his ideas to enter the consciousness of the sciences at the time. Eventually, the Catholic Church got wind of these heretical ideas, and in 1616, De Revolutionibus Orbium Celestium was banned for more than two centuries. Copernicus would not have to face the consequences of having such revolutionary ideas. However, others, like Galileo Galilei, would not be so lucky. Ideas cannot be burned so easily. Despite the backlash of the church, there was no stopping the revolutionary ideas that were entering the sciences. And by the Renaissance, the world would have a completely different understanding of its place in the universe. Today in Poland, Nicolaus Copernicus, or Mikołaj Kopernik, is celebrated as one of the most important Poles who ever lived. Wow. Numerous scientific and astronomical departments around the country are named in his honour, and there are several planetariums around the country, most notably in Torun and Warsaw, that are a popular way of learning about the wonders of space. Torun is now a UNESCO-listed World Heritage Site, mainly for its exquisite brick gothic architecture. I, I was looking and it is beautiful, isn't it? It is so beautiful, just the vibrant colours that is coming from these buildings of the city. So the fact that Nikolaus Copernicus was born and raised here certainly doesn't harm its tourist appeal. Internationally, he's often regarded as the most important astronomer that ever lived, and we certainly will not disagree with that. For more English language content on yeah, subscribe to that channel as well. Um, it's Isn't it funny how there are so many discoveries, for example, inventions and whatnot, that are created and, and discovered, but who the person who discovered it doesn't really get the plaudits until they've passed away. And it's always such a shame. It really is. And partly, this is the same case. However, it was partly a good thing because obviously... The, the church decided to poo-poo it all. Um, fast, fascinating, fascinating story about Copernicus and there's things I did not know. We need people like that. We need those nerds. Uh, <laughs> that's said in a nice way. We need those people to discover things, to, to make people's lives better. Fair play. He is a Polish man. Is he one of the most famous Polish men around? Let me know. Make sure you like and subscribe for more. And I'll catch you next time.